in 2007, um, FDA had the largest recall um, that they had ever experienced. And uh, it started in March uh, 15th, the Ides of March. And it uh, was when Menu Foods had um, contacted FDA to tell them that they had a problem with one of their pet food um, lines. Um, they had a fair number of cats on a taste test uh, trial, and um, these cats developed kidney failure and died. Uh, and because they were confined, uh, Menu Foods was able to trace back and identify that um, the food that was causing the problem um, had been uh, made with a, a wheat gluten product um, that had come from a different supplier. So after this went public, um, CBN, CBM received many, many phone calls from veterinarians that um, had possible cases of um, the poisoning and from owners, and we were really swamped with calls. And so um, since the center is only about 400 people, I was asked to help with the pet food recall, and, and a lot of people were called in to uh, work on the, um, the problem. I was asked to look at the pathology reports that were coming into the center and to interact with the veterinary pathologists um, that were contacting uh, the center. And uh, this was because I had previously, before coming to FDA, uh, done research um, looking at kidney uh, toxicology, and also I had taught pathology at the medical school. So um, after about two weeks um, of testing for uh, all sorts of potential uh, poisons that affect kidneys, um, the FDA Forensic Center um, found malamine in that suspect wheat gluten. Uh, up until then, we all knew that the pet food was causing problems and uh, was causing kidney failure in the animals, but nobody knew what was in the product itself. Um, this was an interesting um, finding because we really didn't expect melamine to be found in pet food. Let me show you what melamine looks like. This is um, a, a six-membered ring with a lot of nitrogens in it. Melamine is used in plastics manufacture, and it really didn't make sense that it was in the wheat gluten or in the pet food. It's also used in Asia as a fertilizer, and in combination with cyanuric acid, it's a flame retardant. So because the Forensic Center had found melamine, I started doing a massive literature search um, on what melamine had uh, um, shown in the past in toxicity studies. And in general, all the toxicologists pretty much said this, this can't be the thing causing the problem because um, melamine is, is only as toxic as table salt. So in other words, you'd have to eat if you ate uh, so much table salt that you would die, that's the same volume of melamine that you would have to eat, which would be quite a large amount. Um, so uh, I did this massive literature search, and I found an article in, in which they had looked at rats for two years. They had given them very um, large quantities of melamine, and um, uh, over those two-year periods, most of the rats survived pretty well. Um, but they made uh, bladder stones. And the authors of this study analyzed the bladder stones and found that they were melamine and uric acid, half and half. Um, and uh, um, so I had found a link between melamine and some kind of urinary tract abnormality. Um, the pathologists, in the meantime, were uh, describing reports of uh, um, crystals in the kidneys. And um, they mentioned that they weren't sure if the um, animals that were affected by the pet food recall um, were dying because of these crystals, but they definitely saw them in the tissues from those animals. Um, they said they didn't see enough crystals to really cause um, kidney damage. Um, and they also said these were very unique crystals and that they had never seen crystals like these before. Um, April 3rd, um, some of the pathologists sent um, images to FDA um, of these crystals, and I'll show you what those look like. 
you can see that they're a golden brown color and they have a radial pattern. There's very fine crystals in here and they make this spherical structure if you think of it in three dimensions. So when the pathologists saw these crystals, they said they had not seen any of these crystals before, nothing like these particular crystals. Um, when I saw them, however, um, they reminded me uh, of crystals that I had seen in human pathology. Um, they looked to me like uric acid crystals. Um, humans with uric acid uh, crystals in their joints will fake, make these small tophi, these little yellow um, nodules in the joints. And if you take a little bit of fluid from the joint and you put it on a slide, you can see these needle fine crystals of uric acid. And these crystals occasionally can form what we call spherulites. So they're these spherical structures that look very much like the crystals that we were seeing with the pet food recall. Um, another feature of these crystals is that if you take tissue from one of these nodules and you put it in formaldehyde, which is the routine preservative that's used um, to uh, do histopathology, um, the crystals dissolve. And um, you can see here, this is the pathology from one of these uh, nodules. And what you're seeing there are clefts in the tissue but the crystals have actually dissolved out of the tissue. And all you see was where they were. I was wondering if the um, crystals that the pathologists were seeing had characteristics similar to the uric acid crystals that you find in humans. Um, and um, one other thing that I um, knew about was a syndrome in humans which is called uric acid nephropathy. Uh, when humans have uh, derangements in their uric acid metabolism and get very elevated uric acid levels, they can produce spherulites like the ones you saw um, in the joint fluid, um, but they can precipitate in the kidneys and cause acute renal failure. And I have a schematic of that um, here. This is a... Um, nephron, which is the filtering unit of the kidney. And this little red area here is the glomerulus. That's the filter where the capillaries um, release some of the fluid that eventually makes the urine. So in this nephron, if you have very high levels of uric acid, you can have crystals form within this nephron in multiple areas, and you can get the entire flow obstructed from enough crystals. What happens then is that the tubules dilate because they're filling with this urine that can't pass, and the entire kidney actually swells against the capsule. This swelling then causes compression of the blood vessels, and without a blood supply to the kidney, the kidney will fail. This is what I thought happened with the um, animals that had received the melamine-contaminated um, uh, pet food. Um, if the melamine was combining with uric acid um, or another compound, for example, like the cyanuric acid that was in the flame retardant, um, I thought perhaps they were developing these crystals um, that we saw in the kidneys and that um, the crystals were obstructing um, the flow of urine. I formulated a hypothesis, which I then submitted to the CBM management, saying that I thought that the melamine was involved, that it was combining with something and forming these crystals in the kidneys, and that the pathologist may not be seeing enough of these crystals because they were preserving the tissues in formaldehyde. Now, um, the hypothesis met with some skepticism, um, since melamine in general is usually considered non-toxic, um, it, it was uh, not widely accepted at first. Um, so like any scientist um, that forms a hypothesis, uh, I tried to go out and um, try to prove it. Uh, so I began to scour the pathology reports for tissues that maybe had not been preserved in formaldehyde. And I found one case report where the veterinarian had preserved some of the kidney in formaldehyde and sent it to the pathologist, but they had also put um, some of the kidney in the freezer. And uh, I contacted the vet and she sent me the kidney. 
and also the images that um, were from the histopathology. This is what the tissues looked like. And again, that cat had very similar crystals to those that I had seen previously in the other animals. And when I received the tissues from the veterinarian that were frozen, we did what we often do in fish diagnostics is we did a wet mount. The wet mounts, you just take a very thin slice of the tissue and you put it on a slide and then you just put another slide on top of it and compress the tissue. Then you look at this totally unfixed and unstained sample under the microscope. So what I saw was all these crystals. Looking at them at higher magnification, you can see that the crystals are all lined up in the tubules and that there's actually debris at the upstream part of the tubule. And so you can see that it actually clogged up the tubule and wouldn't let the debris pass. And if you look at the higher magnification, you can see that these crystals look exactly like what the pathologists were seeing. So then I wanted to see if these crystals would dissolve with formaldehyde. And I took this section and I put it in a slide that has a little well. And I took a picture of it. And this was Friday afternoon. And you can see here that there are these crystals in here. I flooded it with formaldehyde and then came in on Monday morning. And you can see that the same area shows no crystals. There's a little bit of debris on the slide, so you can see that we are in exactly the same position, um, but there's no crystals on that slide. We also sent tissues from this animal to the forensic center, and they looked at these crystals with Raman spectroscopy and were able to identify the exact composition of the crystals. Um, here's the crystals and they did a map with their lasers and they got a spectrum. And that spectrum is identical to the spectrum if you mix melamine and cyanuric acid on a slide. So the spectrum was consistent with melamine cyanurate. So melamine was actually combining with cyanuric acid. This is cyanuric acid. And we now know that these compounds line up beautifully and produce hydrogen bonding, which you can see right here. And these um, interactions then make um, uh, widespread sheets of these uh, molecules uh, of melamine and cyanuric acid combined. And those then um, eventually form the crystals. The crystals can form very, very rapidly. I have a little video that you can see here that shows melamine in solution, and drop by drop, we're adding cyanuric acid. And as soon as you add the cyanuric acid, you can see the white crystals forming, and the precipitate is immediately formed upon dropping these solutions and mixing the solutions together. So we had figured out that the crystals were composed of melamine cyanurate. And um, we also saw that uh, the crystals can form quite rapidly in vitro. And we felt we had a pretty good handle on what was causing the mortality in the dogs and cats, what was causing the kidney failure. So we had figured out what was going on with the pet food recall. And we thought that that story was over. And then a week later, we found out that not only had the pet food been contaminated with the wheat gluten, but that livestock feed, um, pig feed, chicken feed, and fish feed had all uh, been contaminated with the, with the um, melamine. Over 85,000 pigs had eaten this contaminated feed. Over 2.5 million chickens had eaten the feed and many, many fish. So FDA was really concerned about the potential of a food safety problem. And we needed to figure out if these animals um, should enter the food supply um, or if, if they'd be a risk uh, if they entered the food supply. The first thing we needed was uh, methods to detect melamine. Up until then, nobody really expected melamine to be in animal feeds. And so there had been no um, previous uh, work done to look for melamine in animal flesh. 
So because my lab is normally poised to do these kinds of studies, we started uh, within two weeks of finding out that the melamine was in fish feeds, we started uh, dosing animals with melamine, with cyanuric acid, and with the combination of those two compounds. Um, now, how we did this was we um, would weigh out the chemicals and we would give fish um, the drugs in a tube and put those um, uh, capsules that we had weighed out right down into their stomachs. So then we provided tissues to multiple centers around um, the country. We provided tissues to the forensic center, which was working on methods. We provided tissues to uh, Denver's ORA laboratory and to SIFSAN. And all these chemists were um, working together and having conference calls. And within um, another few weeks, they had a method up online. So that was by the end of May. Um, which is really lightning speed if you consider um, uh, all that was accomplished during that time. We also looked at the kidneys of uh, the fish that uh, were exposed, and um, we did the wet mounts similar to what I showed you with the cat, and um, this is the result. The fish that were our control animals had normal appearing kidneys. You can see the glomeruli are these little red capillary tufts, and these kidneys have no crystals in them. The fish that were given melamine alone and cyanuric acid alone also had this general appearance. The fish that received melamine and cyanuric acid together formed massive numbers of crystals. So in addition to developing new methods, we also were able to show without a doubt that when you give an animal melamine and cyanuric acid together, they form these crystals. And the crystals in the fish looked just like the crystals that we were seeing in the dogs and the cats from the pet food recall. So we thought at that point that uh, the story was over and melamine is not going to be added into um, any more uh, food products. And then September 11th, 2008, we found out that melamine was present in infant formula in China. The reports were that Chinese babies had been found with high levels of kidney stones. And it's very unusual for babies to get kidney stones. And the pediatrician's worried about it and complained, and people started analyzing what these kids were eating, and lo and behold, they found melamine uh, in the infant formula. Um, the children um, were not developing kidney failure, per se, except the ones that actually had stones that would get stuck in the ureters, and um, the children then wouldn't be able to pass any urine and um, then they would go into kidney failure. So um, the contaminant that was in the infant formula was melamine alone. And what the children were um, making were melamine uric acid stones. So these were very similar to what I had found out in that first article um, where the rats had been fed melamine for two years and they made um, melamine uric acid stones that ended up in their bladders. Let me show you the difference between the crystals that we saw in the pet foods and, and um, the melamine's uric acid stones that were found in the children. Um, the stones in the infants, this is one stone that is about the size of my pinky finger, and this is a millimeter here. The crystals compared to the stone are very, very, very tiny. And when you magnify them, you can see that just in that little spot, there are about 50 crystals. So the crystals are very tiny and they're located inside the kidney. Um, the stones were um, formed within the kidney, but some of them passed out of the kidneys into the ureters and they're much, much larger. The babies that died from the stones died because the stones got stuck and obstructed the flow of urine, and without being able to pass urine, those babies died. So uh, the infants that formed these stones had been on infant formula for quite a long time, 
and we don't know how long it takes for the stones to develop. Um, but the infant that I showed you, the stone, um, was born in November 2007, and she had been on formula for quite a while before the stone was diagnosed. We didn't realize it at the time, but in 2007, some Chinese producers were adding uh, melamine to poor quality products. They were taking melamine, putting it into wheat flour, and then selling it as wheat gluten, which has a higher protein content. Because melamine has um, the high nitrogen and the tests for protein routinely just test for the nitrogen level, um, they were able to fake the tests um, and look like their products had um, a lot of protein, which sells at a higher um, price. This wheat gluten then um, was imported into the United States. It was used by multiple um, pet food uh, companies to make their pet foods. Um, and then eventually it caused the toxicity in the animals. Um, it also um, was in the um, livestock feeds, um, in fish feeds, in pig feeds, and chicken feeds. And um, as far as we know, it didn't cause mortalities there, but um, it was present um, in levels that could be detected in the food itself.